You'll never guess how easy it is to make lotion. Hi everybody, welcome to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Sarah. Uh, well, today I'm making lotion. Uh, I'm gonna make some that's a little bit special uh, for Kevin for some specific reasons that I'll talk about. But you will not even guess how simple it is to make lotion. And the recipe that I have found is very, very versatile. The recipe calls for uh, distilled water, some kind of oil, and emulsifying wax. Uh, you can really mix up what kind of oil you would like to use. There, there are lots of oils out there that are so good for your skin. Uh, just pick one and insert it into this recipe. It'll be great. I'm going to be using olive oil today that has actually been infused with calendula flowers. Um, but you could use just plain uh, olive oil, uh, coconut oil, jojoba oil, uh, really anything that's great for the skin. Um, today I have some things that I am trying to do in particular with this lotion. Um, now just to let you all know, um, Kevin has some really severe allergies uh, for his skin. And so all of our body products on the homestead, all of our cleaning supplies on the homestead are all homemade so that we have complete control of the chemicals that are entering into our house uh, on our bodies um, and onto Kevin's body. Uh, so today I'm making him a special lotion. He also has psoriasis and it is uh, particularly on the palms of his hands. And when it gets really bad, uh, he gets really deep cracks right on the inside of his hand. So every time he opens it, uh, they crack open and they hurt um, and they bleed sometimes and it's very, very painful. Uh, so I want to make him a lotion today that will help heal his hands when they are um, when they're broken open, uh, but also will nourish his hands uh, all the time. Uh, olive oil is so good for your skin, so I'm going to be using that. I've infused this, like I said, with calendula flowers that I've grown here on the homestead because calendula is so good and nourishing for the skin. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. Instead of distilled water, I'm going to be using colloidal silver that we've made here on the homestead. Now we have done a video about why we use colloidal silver um, in, it, in what ways. Uh, I think we might touch a little bit on um, how we make that. And so I will go ahead and put a link to that video up here so I can move on and don't have to totally explain myself in this video to you guys. But check it out if you're interested. And then for the wax portion, I am going to be using um, emulsifying wax. It is uh, non-GMO wax. It's vegetable based. Uh, it's not soy based. Actually, from what I read, it's uh, made from wheat straw. I could be wrong, but that's what I read. So I'm going to be using those three, those three ingredients, colloidal silver, uh, oil, olive oil that's been infused with calendula flowers, and emulsifying wax. That's it. Easy peasy, let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is measure out the distilled water, which in this case I'm doing the colloidal silver, and we are gonna be using 65 grams. I'm going to be putting it in this pot and heating it up on the stove, and we want it to be heated up to about 160 degrees, uh, and that is also the temperature that we're gonna heat up the oil. I have this uh, fancy little scale it's actually not a very expensive scale, uh, but I use this a lot in soap making and other body products because this particular scale uh, will uh, measure down to one hundredth of an ounce. Now today I'm using grams, uh, but when I'm making a lot of soap and other body products, I use it in the ounces uh, form of measurement, and this goes to the one hundredth. Um, of an ounce rather than just the tenth of an ounce and that's important. So anyway, you can get this on Amazon, it's not that expensive. Uh, so I'm going to be measuring out in my pot, which is going to go on the oven, 65 grams of the colloidal silver. Whoa, that happened fast. Good enough. 
Okay, so we can put that away. But I'm gonna put this on the stove. This really isn't a lot of water or, you know, colloidal silver. But uh, we need to put it on the stove and start heating up to 160 degrees. Uh, it's not going to take long, so I'm going to put it on a really low heat. Next up, we need to get our oil going. Um, I'm going to put it in a jar, a wide mouth jar, and then I'm going to uh, put it in a pan full of water or a pot of water on the stove to heat it up uh, to act as like a double boiler. Um, and because there is still some flowers in here, I'm going to pour and strain at the same time. Let's see if I can do that. I got this set of uh, three strainers off of Amazon uh, because mine was like rusting, my old one, um, and uh, I love it. It's a set of three, a bigger one, a middle one, and then this little bitty one. Okay, here we go. Now I have this, let me just tell you a quick secret. This is super easy. I filled this with olive oil. I put a bunch of dried calendula flowers in here and I put it on the windowsill. And I left it there, it's been six weeks. And that is a perfect amount of time to infuse all of that goodness into the carrier oil, the olive oil. Hopefully I don't make a giant mess. It would have help if I turn this on. Dork. Okay, 30 grams. Whoop! That is too much. There we go. Uh, now we just need to measure out our emulsifying wax. We only need four grams. Oops, see that was too much. Now emulsifying wax uh, is what binds the water portion to the oil portion. Um, but emulsifying wax is um, special because it's it can bind to just oil or just water, not one or the other, and then it can combine the oil and the water together and make them marry into a lotion. That's the difference between emulsifying wax and like beeswax or candelilla wax. Uh, not all of those can do both of those jobs, but emulsifying wax can do both of those jobs. Perfect. Okay, we need to get this in the pan. Uh, into a double boiler situation and heat it up to 160 degrees and allow the emulsifying wax to melt within the oil. Okay, this is my special pot that I always use to do this kind of thing. So I just put the oil in there, the flame is on, create a little double boiler action. I'm just going to pour this emulsifying wax in there right away and then uh, it can start melting inside of there. Okay, so everything is at the right temperature. Now, the reason why you want your water as warm as the oil is so that it doesn't cool it down, it won't emulsify properly, and they will separate. So I'm just gonna pour the colloidal silver into the jar of the oil. And if you have an emulsion blender like I do, that's what I'm gonna be using. If you don't have one, if you don't have one, you can just use a little whisk but I'm just gonna give this a couple little shots with my emulsion blender. Hopefully that'll do the job. Just to emulsify this. Now it's not gonna be thick right away because it's warm. But as it cools down, it will thicken. Now you can just let this cool on the counter and come back to it and continue whisking it, or you can uh, put it in the refrigerator for a couple of seconds, bring it out back and forth and back and forth, or you can put it in a bowl of cold water. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, it has pretty much cooled completely, and you can see down in there it is uh, much thicker of a consistency. I'm just going to add a couple drops of patchouli oil for fragrance. Uh, that is Kevin's preferred scent of essential oils. One, two, three, four, five, six for good measure. Um, and I'm just going to use a spoon to uh, mix that around.
Now, uh, if you know much about making body products that include some kind of uh, water or aloe or aloe vera gel or whatever, um, really, if anything it has water of a body product in it, you should really add a preservative. Um, I am not going to be selling this and I uh, will be having Kevin stored in the refrigerator so that um, it cannot grow bacteria um, or any kind of molds, um, but I really want to keep this as pure as I can for him um, And so we're going to do it that way. I'm also going to be putting this with a funnel. Hopefully it's not too hard Into this little uh, container here, which is squeezable um, And you know it has just a little little flip top that you can squeeze a little bit into your hand And that will prevent any bacteria from getting into it rather than just having a little jar that you dip your fingers into. Uh, so I'm gonna be doing that next, um, and then we'll have him keep it in the refrigerator. I already talked with him about that, and he's totally cool with it, um, because he'll be using it at home mostly, um, and as pure as we can get for him, uh, the better. Okay, so I'm just gonna start spooning this in here, um, and I'm gonna tamp it down. I know this probably looks like a little bit of overkill, but uh, we'll see if it works. This is uh, <laughs> this is a messy job. I keep I keep um, getting this everywhere. There we go. Yes, it takes a little bit of work, but it's going to be worth it. Uh, these containers I also get from Amazon. Amazon's just amazing. Uh, so I'm going to call that good for now. Um, you know, now you can put a neat label on there. Um, I'm just going to put it in the refrigerator because nobody else has lotion in the fridge, but Kevin. Um, so uh, this, I'm excited for him uh, to give a try and see if it really helps him uh, with his psoriasis uh, and all the cracking and stuff he's been experiencing lately. So wasn't that simple? Didn't take much time. Not very many ingredients. Not any real special. Um, equipment or anything. Um, so I hope you learned something. I hope you give it a try. Uh, so you guys, if this is the first time that you are visiting our Homestead channel, now is a perfect time for you to hit the subscribe button below. Uh, if you come back every day and you are one of our traditionalists, thank you so much for coming back every day. Until next time, you guys, thanks so much for stopping by the Homestead. Take care and God bless.